Are we with Jesus? Are we doing what Jesus called and told us we do? Or are we content, happy and content being in our little circles and devouring each other? Circle against circle, Pentecost against, you know, Baptists and division within a circle, people hurting each other within a circle. Stepping beyond ourselves. Hello, brothers and sisters, fellow Americans. Hello, church. Today's message is, are we with Jesus? Are we with him? I'm going to start here. This is Mark 3, 14. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and cast out devils. Let's go down to Mark. Chapter 16, we'll start here at 15. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Are we with Jesus? Do we believe? Do we believe? Like I said in another video, there's no greater area here. These are signs of them to follow that believe. In my name they should cast out devils. There's no gray area. I mean, Jesus spoke it to believers. You see, circles, circles, are dividing us. That's why this channel, channel is called Step Beyond Yourself. I never did once say, leave your church, leave your church. No, I'm saying step out beyond yourself and follow Jesus. Because I have to tell you, you will believe. When you're out here, you will learn more in a week than you will in a year in your church. I don't care how beautiful your pastor is. If you didn't love your pastor, if you didn't think your pastor was the best pastor on earth, well, you'd be an idiot to follow him. You'd be an idiot to go to that church. I mean, that's all there to it. So I believe I have the best pastor in the world, and you believe you have the best pastor in the world. But we're still in circles, and we're not learning. We can quote this whole Bible, but absolutely have no knowledge until we put our faith into practice. In our circles, we devour each other. We do. Oh, we're happy, good lucky, we're saved, and you know, we love our happy, good lucky churches, and you know, we love getting together and listening to our pastor on Sundays, and maybe our Bible studies, and, and prayers and worship, and I love all that too. But out here, you'll learn to follow Jesus. You'll learn to be a follower. I'm gonna skip around and uh, what I'm gonna do is skip around and read uh, different scriptures out of uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 2, and 3. We're gonna start here at 110. Now I beseech you brethren by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that ye speak the same thing that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Well, Jesus says, these are signs that those believe. In my name, they should cast out demons. Until we take that faith, that step of faith in obedience by following Jesus and doing the things that he called us to do, right? we're always going to be divided. I've been in the churches, charismatic churches that were very big. And... They had different sing-alongs, they had different Bible studies in different homes. Within the same body, underneath the same pastor, some people believed in speaking in tongues, some didn't. Division. There was all kind of, I mean, there was adultery going on there. I mean, the Lord showed it to me. I snagged people in adultery, went into church, went into the music team of the church. I mean, all this ungodliness was being just overlooked in this in this church you know what in our circle we are going to devour each other 
You know, I, I, I kind of laugh because in, in Matthew, Jesus kind of confirms murder with angry. He says, you shall not, you heard it for the old, you shall not kill, but I tell you, you know, if you're angry with a brother, you should be, you know, condemned. So, whether we fornicate out of marriage or, or, you know, or whatever, or we murder somebody, or we're just bitter and angry and unforgiven, sin is a sin. We cannot turn around and say, you know, uh, one sin is not as great as the other sin. Well, and, and adultery to me is like horrendous because not only you commit adultery, you know, but you ruin lives, you ruin families and everything else. But under God's eyes, you're just as condemned as if you just had bitter and, en and envy in your heart. And that's what's happening in our circles. But when you learn to step out, I am telling you, when people hurt you, it's just like automatic forgiveness because Jesus Christ, when we step out and follow Jesus, He becomes the center of our being. In other words, the center of our hearts. When the Bible talks about hearts, He's talking about the central of our being, our spiritual man inside of us, the spirit inside of us. And it's so much, <laughs> so much carnality in circles, because it's, it's just kind of like normal. I mean, you know, well, well, let's put it this way. If you make it all about your church and that's stepping out and following Jesus, like this YouTube channel keeps on saying, you know, unify, unity in Christ, stepping beyond ourselves. It's going to be natural to bite and devour each other because we just say that's, you know, that's just who we are. And um, so what does, this, what does Paul say about that? For the preaching of the, of the cross of them that perish is foolishness. But unto us which are saved is the power of God. It is the power of God. The preaching of the cross. So that's what I do when I come out here. I preach the cross. I, Miriam's here. She can witness. Chris is here. I preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified for us. That He died for all our sins. That our righteousness is because He was obedient to the cross. Every, all the gifts that come from the cross, I preach. And because I do, nothing can steal my joy. I mean, there's instant forgiveness when I get hurt. You know, I don't hold on to bitterness. I don't go to bed angry because all that's ungod, ungodly. But in our circles, that will continue to happen. And then he goes on to ask, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. You know, when I'm out here, I don't, if somebody rejects me, if somebody doesn't want to hear me, if somebody says, hey, I hate you, I don't dust my feet off. No, because that was before. That was a people that were chosen to crucify Jesus. The Jews were chosen, chosen to crucify Jesus. Why? So we can be drafted in. And that's the truth. So, I don't. If I get chased out of an area, what I do is I go a little farther away. But I preach so they can still hear. And you would be surprised of the people that come out of these areas where I got chased at. So when I first got here, uh, back in April, it's October now, so what's, what's that, five, six months now? I've been preaching around this area. And uh, when I first got here, there was this woman. 
I don't want to hear it. Get away from me. Get away from me. And I was, I was just walking by her, but she knew I was going to preach, you know. I don't push myself on anybody. I just preach the Word of God. And that's what God's calling us to do. Get out of your circles and just preach the Word of God. You don't know what to say? So I'll just go read Scripture. Go buy a store. Go in a corner. If millions of us coming out of our churches, not only will we stop devouring each other because the peace of God will rise up in us and we'll have the fruit of the Spirit manifesting in us, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, the power of God rising up in us because we are following Jesus and doing what we're called to do. Not only will we walk in peace and our churches will stop devouring each other, not only circle between circles, but within this circle, there'll be peace because we're not just pulling people into our circles, we're actually pushing people out of our circles to become disciples of Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ. Pastors, tell your people to just go out there and read. Just, if you don't know what to say, you know, just say, hey, Jesus, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Jesus died for my sins. And I'm going to live now and forever because Jesus took all my sins. It's simple. If you don't know what to say, church, just talk about why you got baptized. Period. Or read your favorite scriptures. Come out, though. When you come out beyond yourself, you come out into the streets, you'll find just peace. You'll find such a love, such a peace. Because you're following Jesus. You're doing what he's called to do. Look at the first church. The apostles started the first church, right? Jesus says, hey, go away and go away in Jerusalem until you receive the power of the Most High. Then they got full of the Holy Spirit. 3,000 people got saved, and then 5,000. And then contention. Oh, no, now we need to get some deacons in there because contention started. Why? Because they weren't doing what Paul. When Paul started churches, he kept on saying, hey, follow me, for I am as like Christ. He never just stayed in his pews. He would preach in there, but he was always out in the neighborhoods teaching the Word of God. That was Paul. And that's what we're called to do. But yet, if we make it about our circles, there's always going to be attention. And brother, when I came to you, I came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except for Jesus Christ, the person, and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Now, how are we going to get this power of God? We get it by following Jesus. And if you've been paying attention to my YouTube channel, right? Jesus is always saying, follow me. Follow me. The meek shall inherit the earth. Follow me. But in our circles, we will devour each other. Because we make it about ourselves and we are flesh. But when you follow Jesus, you're making it about the spirit. And truly, we are spiritual beings. That's truly who we are. The flesh is corrupted. But when we make it about ourselves, that corruption overtakes. And you know, how do you know that you're followers of Jesus Christ? I'll tell you how. You don't want to hurt anybody in, in any way. You don't talk behind people's back. You're not envious. You're not bitter. You don't go to bed angry. And if you are angry, it's because it's a righteous indignation like Jesus. He got angry because of their hard hearts. But yet, he didn't allow it to change who he was. Manifested in God manifested in the flesh. And that same spirit of God wants to manifest himself in us. That's why we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So the righteous Holy Spirit can work in us, dwell in us, work through us. You know, but how is he going to work through us if we make it all about ourselves? Again, ourselves. We don't want to make it about ourselves. We want to make it about 
doing the will of the Father by following Jesus Christ, and He's calling us out. 1 Corinthians 2.12 Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. I was preaching uh, Tuesday, and this young man uh, was listening to the preaching. Then he asked me, he says, uh, he goes, you know, do you think uh, that I'm humble? I say, yeah, I believe you're humble. I believe that the Spirit of God is manifesting in you. You know, I know you accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord said, I can see it. I can see the, the light in your eyes. Because I did accept Jesus Christ. I'm 19 now. I stepped in when I was 18. But I, I love, he said, this is what he said to me. I love watching, preaching on social media. I, I love going to church and listening to my pastor on, on Sundays. But there's something different when I'm out here. I don't know what it is. It's like, a, it's like a, I feel a presence. I feel, what is it? What is it that I feel? I said, what you're feeling is the power of God, the meekness and power of God. That's what you're feeling. Because it's God in me that compels me to preach to these people out here. And there were people out here on Tuesday. And you know, I had a pretty good uh pretty good audience. It was it was it was very nice. And and then I gave him a suggestion. He goes, I wanna learn, I wanna learn, I I, I wanna learn to to uh follow God. I, I want that power. And I said, this is what you do. <laughs> Go and tell people about Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins. If you don't know what else, what else to say, read the Bible. And if somebody turns around and says, and, it, and attacks you because they know more scriptures than you and from a whole different church, just listen. The only thing I know is what I know, that Jesus died for my sins. But to answer your question, I'll take it to God. And guess what? You will learn more in a quicker way being out than if you listen to your pastor every day preach. You're not going to learn to cast demons out of people. You're not going to learn to heal the sick and lay hands on the sick inside your pews. It's not going to happen. I have never seen miracles inside a church. They're always outside the church. Because people all of a sudden believe, because they never heard this kind of sound before. They never heard somebody just preach righteousness and preach holiness. That it's all done for us at the cross. We don't have to, oh, be so righteous and be holy. We just have to receive. And by the way, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So we are healed, delivered, and set free. Sickness and disease don't belong to us. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I gave a testimony about uh, a demon-possessed guy that's healed now, and my sister here can actually testify to him too. And um, anyhow, Friday was a beautiful, beautiful day. Beautiful day. A guy a couple months ago came to me, he was broken. A guy at work. His niece, was born, baby niece was born with a big brain tumor. They didn't know what to do about it. And I said, God will heal her. And we quoted scripture, I gave him some scriptures, and he kept, and he believed. He never heard this preaching before. He wasn't corrupted by the church, by the doubt and disbelief. Well, Friday, this past Friday, he came to me praising God for a miracle, not even a sign of the brain tumor. Then I came here and this girl, Diane, who hated me, hated me, hated me. You know, when I first got here, all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden she calls me over. She starts praising God because when she got, eventually when she started getting close to me and confiding in me, we pray that God would open her doors and bring good people in her life. She has a job now that she loves, the people that she loves, and she gave God all the glory. Then I went over and seen the guy who uh, had a demon 
um, cast out of him. I looked, his eyes are still light, still beautiful. And not like Monday, he got, the demons got cast on Saturday. Monday, he was unsure whether he was saved or not. Friday, he was like, I am saved. I am really, really saved. And he goes, I'm reading Jonah, and, uh, and I love it. You know, Jonah is what we're reading today. The demons got cast out of him. So he was a little destructive. Miriam it was, it was actually the one that was, uh, you know, preaching at the Bible study. But not like he was the following Saturday when his demon was us. He was like a little kid. He was like asking Miriam all kinds of questions, right, Miriam? <laughs> he was asking all kinds of questions of you. You know, Saturday, you know, the guy who uh, got healed from demons. Yeah. And, but he was like a little kid, you know? And so it was such a beautiful, beautiful weekend. I just, that, so church, are we with Jesus? Are we with Jesus? Are we doing what Jesus called and told us we do? Or are we content, happy and content being in our little circles and devouring each other? Circle against circle, Pentecost against, you know, Baptists and, and division within a circle, people hurting each other within a circle because it's just carnal, it's carnality. And brethren, I could not speak unto you as unspiritual, but unto carnal. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Even as the babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for into you are not able to bear it, neither are you able to now. For you are yet carnal, for wherein there is among you envy and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk like men? Are you not carnal? People, step out of your church. I am telling you. You know, you don't know what to say? Go, go stand in front of a store and just read the Bible. You know, if we just did that, we would take this land back. People would laugh at you at first, but when they see how sincere you and how much you love the Lord and how much you love them, be willing to stand out there in the cold, willing to stand out in the snow or in the heat of the day, going to the same corner and preaching the word. Can you imagine millions of us? What are you gonna do, throw us all in jail? Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed those get persecuted falsely for my name's sake. For great will be your war in heaven. So Saul persecuted the prophets which were before you. So it's a win-win situation. But if you don't step out, there's always going to be division within the body of Christ. Because when we step out and become followers, the grace of God will unite us. Will truly, truly unite us. So I love you, church. Step out. We are carnal. We are a carnal church. We are devouring each other. And you can see the effects in the world. You can see the darkness in this world because the light is happy and content in their pews. That's all there is to it. And we're carnal. I love you. God bless you. And hell. See you again.